What is Slake YouTube? This is Juan from the Gamers Ministry, and today is February 27th, 2012, and the footage that we're watching was recorded on December 29th, 2011. The last of it has been delivered. Good. Make sure he also knows it wasn't easy arranging a shipment like this. It's only white. Some can be fickle in their faith. Your holy book says something on the subject, I believe. Leave them that they may eat and enjoy themselves, and that hope may beguile them, for they will soon know. And never did we destroy a town that had a term made known. What's that supposed to mean? Never mind it. Be about your business. As you wish. And yes, today we're going to be ta tackling the Merchant King and we're collecting the dirt on him. And I figure that because the Merchant King is such a rich man, that it's only fitting that we talk about today about the rich man and Lazarus. The rich man and Lazarus was a parable told by Jesus Christ. And you can find this parable in Lucas 16, verses 19 through 31. And I'm going to be reading it to you if you not if you don't read it on the description or the, follow the link after this eavesdrop mission. So yeah. There's a problem. I need your advice. What is it? This morning, I went to hang the lanterns for the party. And this troubles you? Why? I, I forgot to remove the scaffold. Forgot it where? Just outside the Merchant King's quarters, above the balcony. W what if it falls? It could be hurt. Too late to do anything about it now. Just hope it isn't noticed. You can deal with it tomorrow. So yeah, the rich man and Lazarus. So let's begin reading it, okay, shall we? And it says, there was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and lived in luxury every day. At his gate was laid a beggar named Lazarus, covered and, and covered with sores you want and longing to eat what fell from the rich man's table. Right now, I don't have time. I must find some flags which have been stolen from our cache in the rich district of Damascus. But with this heat, my legs cannot carry me anymore. Would you be kind enough to help me? Return with the flags and I'll help you as best I can. And even the dogs came and licked his sores. The time came when the beggar died and the angels carried him to Abraham's side. The rich man also died and was buried in buried in Hades where he was in torment he looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side so he called to him father Abraham have pity on me and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue because I am in agony in this fire but Abraham replied son remember that in your lifetime you receive your good things while Lazarus receives bad things but now he is com comforted here and you are in agony and besides all this, between us and you, a great chasm has been set in place, so that those that want to go from here to you cannot, nor can anyone cross over, it, over from there to us. He answered, Then I beg you, Father, send Lazarus to my family, for I have five brothers. Let him warn them, so that they will not also come to this place of torment. Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them listen to them. No, Father Abraham, he said, but if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. He said to him, and they never had said to him, if they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, they will not convince them even if someone risen from the dead. So now <laughs> I'll explain to you guys what all that, what all that meant <laughs> while I make it Thank back you. in the right nick of time. Benefic will be happy to see these flags returned. Perhaps this morsel of information will help you. I was invited by Abul to one of his lavish parties. I noticed the fountain in the middle of the Merchant King's palace could be easily climbed. Use this information wisely. Now, if you'd excuse me, I must go. Now, guys, after reading that passage, one could easily, or you know, could easily be led to believe that, oh, if you're rich, you go to hell, and if you're poor, you go to heaven. And it's not exactly like that. Um, so let's all just dive into it a little deeper shall we um first there's two guys right where we have a rich man and lazarus and we know that lazarus pretty much has apparently led a, a pretty hard life it says that he's covered in sores and dogs <laughs> that are that are owned by the rich man lick his sores um so that's yeah that's not pretty cool but anyway let's listen to this guy first 
His kindness knows no bounds. Everything we now have, we have because of him. The Merchant King provides for one and all. He asks for nothing in return. Let his generosity serve as an example to us all. Everyone should strive to be as he. Now, the thing about this passage is that we have to understand that when Christ came to earth, he was pre preaching to the Jewish people. And the thing about the Jewish people is that because they're all children of Abraham, God chose them to be to be you know the, pe the chosen people to bring his word to the his word to the world it, things didn't exactly turn out that way but yeah long long story short pretty much they didn't and or except the early the first early Christians they were Jewish but anyway the point is that a lot of a lot of these people I mean, back in those days they thought that oh yeah because I failed and I couldn't I couldn't fight, follow the guy properly. That's why we're starting it, and did all that. Anyway, so yeah, his kindness knows no bounds. Everything we now have, we have because of him. The Merchant King provides for one and all. He asks for nothing in return. Let his generosity serve as an example to us all. Everyone should strive to be as he. So the thing is that the the Jewish the Jewish people they think that because immediately they're children of Abraham they're gonna immediately go to heaven and and that's that's truly not the case even in those days God wanted them to be beacons in the world and not just simply abuse the fact that they are the children of Abraham so with all of that said um, I, I I don't mean any criticism towards the Jewish people in any way um, actually I respect them greatly because God chose them so I mean just simply be very careful and if you ever talk bad about them just choose your words very carefully because they are the chosen people of God but the point is that here we have a very rich Jewish man and a very poor Jewish man and the very poor Jewish man ended up going to heaven whereas the rich one didn't and as he is in heaven Oh, wait. I'll talk, I'll talk. I've no interest in dying for him. His coin's not worth my life. A wise decision. What is it you want? I have business with the Merchant King. Ha! Huh? Good luck with that. He rarely leaves his chambers. Why? Is he afraid? Not fear. Hate. He hates himself as much as he hates the people he pretends to serve. Locks himself away in his personal quarters out of shame. He can't stay hidden forever. No. Those celebrations of his. He comes out to speak. To look down upon the people. A sense of belonging, I suppose. However brief. What's wrong with him that he would hide like this? <laughs> You'll see. Now let me go. Let you go? So you can tell him of my plan? I won't say a thing. No, you won't. <laughs> Okay, so they can both see each other from heaven and hell, and the rich man is calling out to Abraham and saying, you know, hey Abraham, help me out, get me, get me out of this jam. It was good of you to come. It is an honor to serve. What do you require? The letter I've given you must be brought to Salah Adin's camp. Seek out the one they call Hisham. He will be able to help, but tell no one else of this. None will know my mission. Then our business is concluded. And he's asking for Abraham to, you know, send Lazarus so he can, you know, he can quench his thirst, quench his heat uh, from all the, the torment that he's feeling in heaven. I'm sorry, in hell. And he's talking and he, and, and he, as we can see on, let me see, verse, verse 25, we can say like, Abraham replies, Son, remember that in your lifetime you receive your good things while Lazarus received bad things. But now he is comforted here and you are in agony. And when you read that, you're like, you know, what's going on here? Oh, because he had a good life, now he has to end in suffering? No, that's that's not the case at all. Um, oh yeah, wait, this is interesting. Here they meant... Altair, my friend, my brother. It's been such a long time. Any news of Ada since she left? No. How sad. I'm sure you'll find her someday. I've heard a feather is lying on top of Abul Nukud's head. Maybe I could help you, but 
I have a mission myself. I have four targets I must eliminate before noon. Let's cooperate, just like old times. Two for you, two for me? They are Abu Nukud's personal guards. You will spot them in minutes. Oh yeah, so that Ada girl, that's Altair's, I guess, world friend or love interest. But anyway, so the thing is that he's talking about, you know, questioning his thirst, thirst and stuff like that. And so, pretty much first off, it's very clear there that you, that there is no, if you're stuck in hell, you're in hell, if you're in heaven, you're in heaven. And secondly, um, he's talking about, um, you know, that, oh, you live, you had good things and bad things. And you might easily end up like, believing, like, oh, wait, you know, so if I'm, if I'm a rich person, then I'm a medical, hey, hell, then go to hell, then no. Because if we continue reading, um, on, on verse 30, you can see that, um, the rich man says, no, Father Abraham, but if you send someone from the dead, meaning Lazarus, and to talk to my brothers and, si to my brothers and sisters, you know, and tell them to reap to you know tell him what's going on what happened to me they will repent so here you see by by talking about repenting we're talking here that the rich man was a bad man that he did not really follow god's commandments or things like that because there are many commandments out there that are talking about just being a good person wasn't that great just like in alep you remember here's something i found on one of the merchant king's men i think it's a map of where he has stationed his guards I'm sure it will come in handy in your mission. Anytime you're in Damascus, come see me. You know my door is always open to you. Safety and peace, my friend. So, after, so, so you can so you can see here on verse 30 that the rich man was a bad man, but we can see. But but here's the kicker and why I want to talk to you guys about. In verse 31, it says, um, Abraham said to the rich man, he said. He said to him, if they did not listen to Moses and the prophets, they will not be convinced even if someone rises from the dead. Now, what does this all mean? Is that you find a lot of people nowadays that they, you try to talk to them about Christ, you try to tell them the truth of what's out there, that our, 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 our spirit, our life, the warfare, the struggles that we're constantly facing every single day, they're not again bodies of flesh and bone they're against people that i mean they're, they're not they're against the spiritual world they're against spirits and they're against yeah pretty much demons i'll just i'll just tell you like it is we're, we, our, our fight is against these things and if someone no matter who it is even be it me that i'm telling you this or be it someone freezing from the dead if you decided not to believe when someone talked to you you're pretty much effectively rejecting christ right there and then so all i can tell you is if someone ever wants to talk to you about christ do not reject them look christ is the way the truth and the life nobody will ever get salvation if not through him don't I, 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 look, I tell you because even though you don't know me, believe me, I truly care for you, and I am just trying to lead you towards a better, a better path down in life. Because <laughs> the, look, the, if, if you look at the world, you know that it's messed up, and the only tr true answer out there for a better quality of life is through the Father and Jesus Christ Himself, and that's that's all the tips I can give you guys. When, you know, by just reading this passage, but I didn't get a little, whole lot of chance to talk more about it, so we'll talk more about it in the next video. Peace be upon you, Altair. How may I serve you? I've done as asked and learned all I need to know about my prey. Then you must share your knowledge with me. Abu Nakud is corrupt to the core and despised by his own citizens as a result. It appears he's been stealing money meant for the people of Damas and spending it on himself. Even as we speak, he flaunts his greed, preparing for a lavish party. His guards and servants should have their hands full dealing with the guests. They won't even know I'm there. Most impressive, my friend. The others said you'd make a mess of things, but not I. No, I was sure you'd come through, and come through you have. The bureau is yours to do with as you please until you're ready to begin. This Rafik, man, he's the most instigating Rafik of ever. He's like, he seriously, he, 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 so sarcastic and makes you mad. Fast memory to a more recent one. But yeah, guys, anyway, uh, this, there was so many objectives and so many dialogue in this episode, it was kind of hard to talk more, so we'll see you next bit then.